The title is Prophetic Significance of the Passover Lamb. In John 1.29, John the Baptist sees Jesus and exclaims, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. In that upper room, Jesus is revealing the truth about him told by John the Baptist that he is the true Passover meal. And a Passover meal is just not a ritual. It's a first and foremost, a sacrifice. Jesus is going to become the lamb and also the high priest who is offering up the sacrifice. So that is the most important truth he's sharing in the Passover. Might be the disciples would not have understood at that time. But this truth today, what we are going to speak about can change lives. So better take every notes. And so it is going to be life transforming. You know about this Passover lamb and the covenant with God has cut with us, changed my life. I have written about it so many pages and pages in my diary. If you can grasp the significance of this, your life will be changed. It's an exciting and freeing tool. You know, this uh, book, Covenant God by K. Arthur, was very helpful to me when I was going through problems. So coming to the subject, the word, the word Mondi is derived from the Latin Monday term. That means commandments. So God gave two commandments on that day. Jesus, so many commandments of the Old Testament, he left out. And finally, he gave them only two commandments. I give you a new commandment today. Love one another as I have loved you. And the first one is love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second one is love one another. So from the vertical relationship, the horizontal relationship with others come across. So how do we love God? And why do we love God? That is the title of this you know, how do we love God and why do we love God? Loving God with all our heart and mind, is it possible? David says in Psalm 27, 3 and 4, Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. He said that I will not be afraid. The Lord is my strength. For David, the Lord is his strength. But still there was something missing in his life. I want you more. I want you more. One thing I ask of you that I want to be with you. So today are we having that? That's what Jesus told Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Something exciting it is. I want to be with you. I want to know you more. I want to know the fellowship of your suffering and the power of your resurrection. That's what Paul said. What is the one desire of your life? What is that one desire that becomes the mission of your life that makes you excited? That's what Jesus wants. Is it him or is it something else? Because that's what David wanted only to be with the Lord. So that should be our desire, the one thing, everything we can think of, but that one thing, the foremost of everything. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, Paul says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, and we are transformed into the same image, glory to glory by the Spirit of God. When we look at Jesus, we get transformed and people will look at us and they will see Jesus through us. That's why Paul says, and in the next verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 1, he says, this is the ministry which has been handed to us. We all think full-time ministry is to go and leave everything and to go and stay in some Bible college and study. But here it is telling, <clears throat> Bible says, that beholding God day and night and with unveiled faces, how he is closer to us in our secret closet, looking at him, listening to him, speaking to him, that transforms us, that makes us one with him and that should be our ministry. But why do we do that? Why should we love God? What makes us to love God? Then we come to this. Romans 5, 7, 8. Paul says, for only one will hardly die for a righteous man. Because for a good man, people will like to die. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were its sinners, Christ loved us. 
that's why we are supposed to love him christ died a horrible death on the cross you know he died in a very horrible manner crucifixion is the worst worst way of dying this the the victim struggles to breathe he's not even able to breathe whenever he has to go up his the pain in his wrist and in the leg intensifies he has to carry his body up to breathe and then down it is excruciating pain jesus was on the cross for 6 hours and 3 hours his father's presence was not even there all the cruel sins of the world was put on him he was drinking the dirty cup that's why the world became so dark there was earthquake and everything was there because jesus was drinking the horrible wrath of god and he cried out my god my god why have you forsaken and finally he cried it's finished so that is the passover lamb he gave that in that upper room i am going to die like this and i'm going to come back again so think of this when you drink this cup and eat this blood think of me when you drink this and eat my blood eat this when you eat this bread and drink this wine think of the blood that i shed for you think of my body that was pure for your sake that is the covenant that is the um, contract is doing with them we just think covenant is something easily but when we look at it it transforms our life jesus said to them i'm telling you the truth if you do not eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you will not have life those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and i will raise them on the last day what do you mean by that my flesh is the real but so that means you have to be born again you have to accept me in your heart and you will become mine and mine alone so that's why you have to remember remember what i did for you on the cross remember my sacrifice on the cross whenever you drink of it don't drink just like that think of that blood that oozed from my body because of scourging because of the thorns because of the cross that's what he instituted you know there is a beautiful truth this is the funnel this is the crux of everything but god has been speaking about it from the old testament let's go back to it you know exodus 12 um you have this verse in 12 to 13 i will pass through the land of egypt on that night and i will strike all the first born in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i execute judgment i am the lord now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when i strike the land of egypt when i see the blood i will pass over you for israel will be spared the judgment your first born will be spared when you apply the blood of the lamb you know this is very important jesus is telling that i am the passover lamb everybody that cutting one passover lamb there is no need for that sacrifice i have sacrificed once for all exodus 12 in which god instructs the israelites sacrifice a lamb so that night they all sacrifice and they put the blood on their sil and that's why when the death angel came he never touched any of the israelites but he killed all the first born of the egyptians and this shows the covenant the mosaic covenant god made with them i will protect you with this passover meal because of the blood of the lamb and that's why now the blood has power god has been doing that from the beginning you know there is life in the blood let me just take you back let us go back and back to the human history you know probably before that why why i wanted to explain is in every sacrifice you will see jesus in the old testament you know the hebrew word for covenant is berit isaiah called jesus as a covenant i will keep you and i will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the gentiles 
and Malachi, he is telling in 315, God reveals his unconditional covenant by sending his messenger. And the messenger of the covenant is coming. He will suddenly come to his temple. Is referring to Jesus as the messenger of the covenant. Everybody, every prophet saw Jesus as the messenger of the covenant. The covenant is coming. What is that covenant? In Berith, it's called in Hebrew. It is like cutting the covenant. It is making a deal. Why the deal has to be made? Jesus, God made Adam and Eve and put them in the Garden of Eden. Then he never wanted them to see evil because evil is horrible. That's why he told, do not eat the fruit of the tree. For you will know what is good and what is bad. But they ate and broke the covenant. God could have punished them and sent them out of the garden. But God did not punish. He just told that I am going to come again and I will deliver you. Though he punished in a smaller way, he did not punish them eternally. He told still there is redemption. That's why you can see this word. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. What do you mean by that? He's telling to the serpent. He's telling to the devil that though you have made my human beings, the men whom I have made to get out of the garden. I wanted to walk with them. I wanted to talk with them. But you have made me to send them out because they cannot eat the fruit and eternally live in sinful ways. So I had to send them out. But I am going to send my son. You might try to bruise his heel, heel through so many problems by doing sending crucifixion or this scourging. But he's going to bruise your head through that very thing. So his purpose through that crucifixion is to cut off your head, to bring victory over you. That's why we have victory over Satan. We have victory over every evil power because of Jesus' cross and resurrection. You know, this is a very important truth given in Genesis 3.15. That God, the man, even after going out of the garden, he sinned. That's why God had to wipe out the whole humanity. But still he had mercy. So he said to Noah, he went to a righteous man called Noah and he said, I will establish my covenant with you. So you make an ark, you and your sons get into it. I'm going to protect you. And then God did what he said. You can read in Genesis 9, 11, I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off. Hereafter, I'm never going to cut any of the human beings like this by the whole world was destroyed by the blood hereafter it's never going to come that's why he gave a sign of rainbow rainbow was a sign he gave a sign for his covenant so this is the first word the covenant is coming covenant means a pact in those days in marriage ceremonies or two armies or two people or kings are making covenant what they do you know they would take some animals. They would, for example, might be one animal, let us say. They will cut it and they'll put down the pieces on the ground. And then both the parties will walk between the pieces through the blood. So that means if, let us make this pact, let us make this covenant. And if you or me do not do any of these things, you will be destroyed. If you do not do, you will be destroyed. If I do not do, I will be destroyed. Like the same manner, how the blood of this animal is flowing, our blood will flow. So that's why it is a covenant in blood. It's a life and death covenant. Now you know this, Genesis 15. Today we are going to dwell on that. You are having a very beautiful covenant made by God in Genesis 15 with Abraham. So God wants to make a um, covenant with Abraham. It's a bloody sacrifice, a bloody ritual. So God is telling, take these animals, three-year-old high goat, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon, and cut them into two, and place each piece opposite to the other. And then let that blood flow, and let us make a covenant. So Abraham knows what God is going to do. What? Because Abraham was asking why it is, you know, God has told that Abraham that I'm going to give you a land. You get out of your father's place. 
and I'm going to be, give your generation, give your children that will be like stars. And I'm going to bless you. Those who curse you will be cursed. Those who bless you will be blessed. So Abraham is asking, how will I know it, God? So God's telling, I will prove it. Let us make a covenant. So Abraham is waiting. Let God come. How he will come? No man can look at God and live. So he's just waiting. But you know, God knows if he makes a covenant with Abraham, and if he makes both Abraham and he walks, if Abraham cannot be perfect, so Abraham will sin. So what will happen? His generation will be wiped away. So God decided any punishment, even if you sin or if I break it, everything, let it come on me. Let me alone walk through the pieces. Let me alone take the punishment. Even if you do sin, let the punishment come upon. Let me be cut off. That's why when Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, it was away from the place. It was out, out of the place. He was the lamb that was slain for the sin of his people. You can read this beautifully here. He said to Abraham, your descendants will be strong, but they will serve in a place which is stranger place. And though they are strong, you will serve a different place nation you will serve the egyptians and finally i am bringing going to bring them out of that place so this is the one he said and then it came to pass when the sun went down abraham god made abraham to sleep he, abraham was so fearful god made him to sleep so he never allowed him to walk it was dark and there appeared a smoking oven and had a burning torch that passed between the pieces what do you mean by burning Torch and the smoking oven. When God came upon Mount Sinai, the whole mount shaked and he was, it was full of smoke and cloud, dark clouds. So God is depicted by smoke, Father God, and the burning torch, the light. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's why Jesus, it is depicting Jesus as like those pieces of animals that is slain. And Father and the Holy Spirit are walking. The Father God, the triune God is there. It is depicting that um, picture. That's why when Jesus died on the cross, he cried out two times, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabakthani, to Father and Holy Spirit. The Trinity is beautifully pictured. This is a wonderful thing. God is telling whatever punishment it's supposed to come. Let it come on me. Let me take it. So I am going to give you that promise. I am going to tell whomever blesses you will be blessed. Whomever curses you will be cursed. Uh, cursed and your generation is going to inherit. What a beautiful way. What a beautiful God we serve. This will change our life. God has made a covenant with us. When you know there are two people are making a covenant, what do you mean by that, you know? I am putting you on you. They exchange the dresses. They exchange the swords. So they say that I'm putting on you and you are putting on me. We are one. That's why in John 17, Jesus cried as father as I am one with you. Let these people be one with us. Your enemies are my enemies. Whomever touches you, touches the apple of my eye. And no Satan can touch you, my dear friends. When you're weak, my strength will be there for you. I am. So let's die to our independent living. Let's live for Jesus today. It's a walk into death. We have made this bond in the blood of the lamb. That's why it's a walk into death. That's why when he cried out, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabakthani, I was forsaken, so my people will not be forsaken. I was alone, so my people will not be alone. I was put outside, so my people will be accepted. Let us accept Jesus Christ today in our heart. Christ's death fulfills God's covenant. That's why we could boldly come. Now, you know, he is a high priest and the holy of holies. We can, the high priest enters with the blood of the lamb. When Jesus died, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. And it is beautifully written. Therefore, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And behold, I'm telling, I have come in the volume of the book, it's written of me to do your will. On Gethsemane, Jesus said, 
Yes, Lord, it's not my will, it's your will. Let me drink your wrath that came upon these people because of their sin. Jesus drank it and cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Let us now today enter boldly into the holy of holies through the blood of Christ, through the veil. What a wonderful truth. Jesus says, you have not obeyed my but I have made a way for you. Would you live for me? Would you live for me? Would you look at me on the cross? Would you give your life for me? I have made a covenant with you, my child. Like how I made Abraham to sleep completely. And so he did not walk. I walked so that every punishment was put on me. And because of my blood, there is a way to the father you can ask anything in my name and the father will give today let us ask boldly in prayer let us come to him boldly this jesus died on the cross he gave us everything on the cross so that we will inherit this world and the future world we will have lived eternally because of jesus sacrifice on the cross so now let us live a covenanted life like paul said when Jesus met Paul on the road to Damascus, Paul's life got transformed. The persecutor became the greatest preacher and he cried out, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. Let us come to him. In that same way, let our life be transformed like Paul's life. Let us, let us live for Jesus. Let's come to him and ask, Father, precious, precious, sweetest Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. You washed your disciples' feet and showed us that you have come to serve others, not to be served. Give us that same humility. Give us that serving nature. Remove every pride, anger, and every sin in our life. Forgive us through the blood of Jesus. Forgive us through the blood of Jesus. Today, whoever are here, Father, if there is any curse in their life, I break it through the blood of Jesus. Lord, if there is any pain in their body, any disease in their body, any cancer, any COVID, any virus, Lord, right now I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. If there is anything between you and your people, any sin that is hindering, Father, Lord, forgive them, Father. Any bitterness that is hindering your presence, that's hindering your answer, Lord, to your prayers, Father, forgive them, Lord, and keep them closer to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the promise you made on the cross. Thank you that you said that behold, I'm with you till the end of the world. Thank you for the covenant. Thank you once again. We love you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's sing to this song. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing? Are, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for his presence bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? 
are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean, oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 